Good morning, my soccer universe. Well, for me, it's not that good of a morning uh, because the Rossonera community is, of course, wearing black. And yeah, I'm a little bit too. Um, but yeah, and also the weather decides to be to reflect my mood. We had a wonderful day yesterday, and now it's all winter again. But by the weekend, we should have a great spring weekend. Well, waiting for that. Uh, the silver lining, of course, is that Lusk won also the next game of the season. They conceded for the first time, but turned it around and finished the, how to say, the regular season, to say it in American ways, um, in second place. behind Salzburg but now that the points are halved it's only a four point difference to Salzburg and eight points ahead of the rest of the pack who are all sitting on the same amount of points. It's a ridiculous system but hey <laughs> four points off the championship you never know you never know I still don't would, I still would not believe it but you never know what's gonna happen um, and I think the big news, and then I stopped uh, talking about Austria, is that Rapid Wien, Rapid Vienna, did not make it to the championship round. So they're not among the top six, they are in the bottom six. Uh, but they still have a chance, unbelievable as it is, they still have a chance to get a European spot. Um, maybe we should do a video in the Austrian league if anyone is interested. But no, let's talk about the games I watched yesterday and as always now that I will try to do a league roundup, um, I will shoot it probably this evening before the Monday games, I will add the Monday night scores in uh, during the editing, I will probably refer to that in the video what could happen, if that's so you'll be all on track of that and yeah, that should then be out too. Uh, I have to see if I'm gonna do a new jersey. Uh, I'm gonna present one of my jerseys, uh, but you know, now there's that there's an international week uh, coming up. I might actually go for an international jersey. Uh, which sounds like a fun thing to do. And anyway, I always said, well, I think the club game is the better game. Uh, the international jerseys, I do like a lot better for some. A, mostly no sponsor and also uh, there's a certain colorfulness to it not necessarily from the colors itself but also um, how to say uh, you get so many nations in there you cover way more nations this way than uh, typical club games because all, most of my club jerseys come from six seven from six countries seven I want to say no six countries. That's that. Okay, let's. Uh, my afternoon started actually watching uh, Liverpool Fulham, and at that point, the, one of the more remarkable results of the weekend already happened uh, with Genoa beating Juve 2 0, uh, which was a completely deserved victory. Uh, actually, Juve would have taken the lead if it wasn't called off for offside uh, late after VAR review would have been typically Juve uh, I think there was also a penalty given for Genoa in the first half that was taken off um, anyway Genoa was the better team and they got two late goals um, to hand Juve the first victory which were without Ronaldo so I mean from some point I can actually understand Juve resting now their players because the championship is in the bag with really not much effort of their part. I mean, they really haven't played all the all the all of the well, especially of as of late. Championship is in the bag, and you can now focus on the big goal, Champions League and Ajax. So let's see if Juve is going to do something. Um, so Liverpool Fulham, the first one. I decided against. I, I was thinking, shall I watch Lazio against Parma or Juve Fulham? 
uh, when I saw that at the ha half time last, it was already 4 0 ahead, I didn't regret it. Uh, Liverpool Fulham, it was not all that uh, wonderful of, of a game. Uh, Liverpool does not uh, instill any confidence in their abilities as of late. Um, and if it wasn't for Mane, the name right, <laughs> for now, uh, if it wasn't for Mane, I think they would be really suffering at the moment. Uh, Mohamed Salah's form at this point in time is just dreadful and you can see he has no confidence uh, in his abilities and it's a typical striker move uh, if it's going well it's going super well and if not it's not going, not going well still he has quite some goals this year but he has now a goal drought that is eating away and I hope he will recover it I mean in a way, they actually try to feed him, but he's not taking their chances and uh, could end up hurting. Game, first half was kind of slow, nothing exciting, except for one really nice move where Mane makes a run, then um, passes it ahead to Firmino, can cross into the box, Firmino puts it back and Mane can slow it home. It was a beautiful passing move. Um, I think with some better, Awareness in defense, uh, it could have the goal probably could have been avoided because someone needs to pick up Mane. But honestly, this was a goal that really uh, made me smile because it was so beautifully played. Because you knew, uh, you saw that the uh, uh, ratio between Firmino and Mane is just there, they are really uh, un 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 understanding their routes and so on. So, really. I like that, 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 that move. That was really not much from Fulham. Uh, different than in the second half, uh, where Fulham actually comes back and um, has chances. And I have to say, Ryan Babel, there was this one count, counter attack where he gets the ball within his own half. If he passes it right at the beginning, to the right, the guy running with him uh, would have had a much better position and probably fully would have made the goal uh, there and then. They actually made the goal from a really defensive um, blunder, I mean slapstick, I gotta say. Um, and it is funny, I mean, I since I woke up way too early, I actually listened a little bit to ESPN FC to you know, get a little update. And they said that Milner came on uh, with the instruction, calm the game down. Well, he didn't. He first sliced the ball, which by itself was not that, that bad because Van Dijk can just uh, control it, head it to the goal, goalkeeper, goalkeeper takes it up and that's that. Nope. The header is a little bit too soft. Uh, Alisson thinks pro for some reason it's a back pass, so he, 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 doesn't, he doesn't want to take it. Uh, total blunder and suddenly Babel uh, runs free on goal and uh, nets it. 1-1 one, one Fulham and at that moment you gotta be thinking for if you're Liverpool not again, we're dropping again points, we can't go even although we have a game more, we can actually put some pressure on City by getting ahead in the table those were my thoughts as well before, unfortunately 5 minutes later a complete blackout by the Fulham goalkeeper, so Slapstick defending uh, the second where basically for no reason he pulls back, uh, I think it was Mane who earns a penalty and Milner now really counts the game down and makes it 2-1 and then there was a counter-attack where Salah probably should have made it 3-1 but I didn't have one. So yeah, Liverpool takes the lead in the Premier League again. Um, all I can say is two points ahead now, yes, City has a game in hand but you gotta feel, uh, you know, it's good to put on the pressure because this is what City has been doing uh, for, for, for a while now. Liverpool and you know, I want Liverpool to win the Premier League. I'm all behind them. I just, my confidence is very much in. Then it was a lot of flipping around the channels. I wanted to watch uh, Sevilla, uh, Espanol Sevilla. Um, but then I saw that there is actually overtime in the FA Cup game between um, Millwall and Brighton and Hove Albion. So I decided on that, um, watching today, I mean, Millwall took a late 2-0 lead and in the 89th minute, uh, Brighton 
nicely taken shot, makes it 2-1 uh, from Millwall's point of view. And then in the 96th minute, it's, it's a relatively easy free kick in and the goalkeeper doesn't know what to do. Shall he fist it? Uh, shall he catch it? Uh, well, he lets it go and it goes into the net. Horrible goalkeeping mistake. Uh, over time was not much happening. And can I say something? I love the Millwall shirts. I really love them. Do they always play? I, I really don't know anything about Millwall. This might be the first time that I've seen Millwall. Uh, but those, I mean, you know, you, I'm a sucker for um, dark blue shirts. Those looked wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, maybe too many sponsors. But other than that, they really looked great. Um, do they always use dark blue navy? Or are they having you? regular blue that they had, what I would like to know. Um, the Brighton shirts, however, were atrocious. Uh, I can get behind the Brighton home shirt, but both the green away shirt and now this third shirt. Um, and I didn't mind the yellow as much as the shoulders with the black and yellow mingling. Uh, I know that if Nike was still behind Dortmund, that is probably what Dortmund will both play. And yes, the Puma shirts this year are not that much better, but this one, I... Was not quite bruised banana, but it was up there. It was up there. Uh, Brighton actually should have gotten the winner if the Lions woman wouldn't have uh, lost the backhand a little, a little bit, because the, that last minute goal should have stood. And it goes to penalties and yeah. Brighton misses the first, then uh, the fourth kick by Millwall was saved, uh, and then Millwall actually had always, um, then uh, Brighton always had the advantage because they were going first, and that's exactly what happened. Then uh, the, in the sixth uh, shooter of Millwall pulled it over the bar, uh, wants to play it safe. Brighton moves on, plays Manchester City. Not excited about that one. Uh, I think the other semi final is more interesting. It's uh, Watford against Wolves. And I actually wanted to play uh, that they play each other until I realized, well, uh, what jerseys are they going to play? Uh, that's going to be interesting. I actually I really like the Wolves jerseys. Uh, I know, I actually also for the Watford, although I know they never play in stripes. Anyway. Uh, I did watch a little bit of Espanol Sevilla, I saw that Sevilla pulled off the win, but I didn't see much. I, I don't think I saw the goal, I haven't seen any highlights. Uh, then it was Napoli, Udine, which actually was an interesting game with Napoli, where uh, six goals were scored and I only saw the goals from Udine for some reason. Uh, Napoli took a rather quick 2-0 lead. Um, that Udine then out of nowhere equalized. Uh, they were they got themselves back in the game and they got an equalizer. It seemed a little bit out of nowhere because you thought Napoli played it safe. Now uh, it's 2-2 and probably then deservedly so. But Napoli in the second half makes it 4-2. Uh, moving over Valencia Getafe, which was a huge clash that I should have realized a little bit sooner. That that that, that was a huge clash, but it ended goalless. And every time I watch. A Sunday evening with Valencia playing, it's always the same. Valencia attacking and not getting the ball into the net. It's a deja vu all over again. Valencia is the uh, draw king in this season. And yeah, and then there were the three big games in the evening where I only chose one, and I think there was really only one game to go, I mean, at least for me anyway. I mean, I'm a Milan fan, you know that. And yeah, the Milan Derby. Let me say two things before I go a little bit more. It was an absolutely great game. Really great game. Uh, that actually eases a little bit my uh, pain at the Derby loss. And the second thing, uh, it's a little bit more complaining. What was Inter playing in? I knew that they were playing in the mashup kit. It's horrible. Don't play in the mashup kit. This is just a mess. Uh, at one point I even thought I need to adjust uh, because they had this uh, 2010 shirt in there that was kind of, uh, you know, where the stripes were fading into each other and then they were on top and the best thing were the numbers in gold and with the Milan man in there. That 
was a nice touch. Really, I like that one. But that kit. Uh, but back to the game. I had a feeling it was horrible on first in the Europa League. And I had a feeling they put all the eggs in the Derby basket. They don't care about the Europa League. Let's secure the Champions League spot right here. And they started out well. Uh, really put Milan under pressure. I saw there was a move by Bakayoko right at the beginning where it seemed, yep, this, and I know it's stupid to say it's a turn to avoid. He was confidently more moving forward, then mishandles it and Inter takes with the ball and immediately uh, puts Milan under pressure. And uh, same thing a little bit later, Paqueta, same thing. Milan was not ready for Inter. And Inter pounced on the first chance. Uh, cross into the back post uh, where Lautaro Martinez hands it towards the center. And Donnarumma doesn't know what to do with it. Uh, he's just running wildly through the box. Uh, which, yeah, Donnarumma did not have half his best day. I honestly think it was. It was not an easy thing to defend, but honestly, with a little bit uh, more trust, you actually can get that ball. I think he doesn't need to run through the box. So Lautre puts it uh, to, to the center with there's Vecino and he slams it into the net uh, quite spectacularly. It took me 20 minutes uh, to kind of get something get somehow back in the game and it was mostly coming from Javanoglu who actually played a great game I have to say. Uh, always dangerous, always in there. Um, but Inter had the far better chances. Uh, while my fan heart wanted to see that Milan is getting uh, the, one, the equalizer and Paqueta had one chance, John Lovio was shooting well, but it was always blocked away. There was nothing really great. Uh, Inter, on the other hand, I mean, they had two or three chances. It should, could have been, should have been 2 0 at halftime. I think the only uh, towards the end of the first half, Milan had something going for them, but never I think they shot something to the short corner. I mean, there were a few corners, but not much coming from there. And it was, I know many people said they only see Milan winning this one. And I watched my videos. Uh, the last two games by Milan, they were not all that great. I mean, everyone is talking how great they're playing. No, they were not all that great. It was not. Uh, I did not have the color. It, it reminded me a little bit of Liverpool, honestly. Uh, a month back, Milan was wonderfully playing, really well. But you know, it's also um, Piantek has been slightly figured out, I think. Uh, the defense looks good, but if Donnarumma has an off day, and yesterday he had an off day. Um, and going forward, nope. I th honestly think that as much as I love Suso, he's always doing the same tricks and um, I miss a little bit the speed. I really like Kessie uh, as a hard worker, I like Bakayoko. I don't know about Bilia, honestly. Um, he made a wonderful free kick and he is kind of... He commands the midfield, but I honestly like the dyna dynamic of Bakayoko and um, Kessie together a little bit better. But you know, uh, it's my personal feeling. But um, what 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 I miss with Milan is kind of the dynamic forward movement that Paqueta can give you. But uh, to be honest, Paqueta at the moment. He's hitting a rough pitch, he doesn't seem quite super fit. And you could see that you, can, you see always glances of him playing great, and then uh, he quickly drops off. And that, that's what I unfortunately saw. Yes, 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 as well. Uh, brief glances, but coming off Inter, and as much as it pains me, was the, clearly the better team in the first half. And technically, Spalletti for once got it right. I mean, putting that much pressure on Milan. Um, and especially, you know, Inter, the midfield was just all overrun. It was basically the Inter attackers hitting right at the four at the back without much uh, breakup 
from the likes of, as I said, Paketa, Kesi, and uh, Bakayoko. And therefore, the attack was hanging a little bit in the air. The second half starts like the first. Inter absolutely getting, uh, putting pressure on Milan again, and they get the equalizer. I think it's for a free kick, and then the Frey uh, heads it in 2 0. And that point, I'm thinking oh, this could get ugly because uh, the, this little bit momentum the Milan had, no, got really, really, really ugly. Could get, get really, really ugly. Fortunately, Bakayoko heads had it in just a few minutes later, and it's 1 2 game on. And you could see suddenly the stadium, which is, uh, was a Milan home game was behind them, there was some energy going, and you bring on Castillejo, who has speed. Uh, I really like Castillejo, to be honest. Uh, he He's so much faster, uh, he's just sloppy, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, he was super sloppy, leaves out his foot in, 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 the, in the box, and penalty. And as much as I would like to argue, yeah, stupid, it was no, no, should not have been given, blah, 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 yeah. If you see the re replay, he knows exactly what, what he's doing. He's just leaving the leg out a little bit too long, and it's so stupid because I don't know who it, who it was, what was, what was, what was, what was, who runs out of the box. He runs out of the box. And you leave the leg out. Stupid, absolutely stupid. Penalty, Martinez makes it 3 1, and yeah, you had to think that it's over. No, it wasn't over quite yet. It wasn't over quite, quite, quite yet because again, a few minutes later, Milan gets the equalizer. Um, free kick in from... Uh, I think it was Suso. The first one was Chalanoglu uh, that uh, Bakayoko had, had in him. It was a great, great header. Uh, Suso uh, uh, puts in a cross or a free kick. I don't recall that now. Um, that Almost that they, they saved on the line, uh, but the ball comes back to Golden Musaki who puts it in 2 3. And the, at that point, I have to say, the goal scorers were mostly, I mean, mostly defensive minded players except for the penalty. Which, honestly, uh, if Donnarumma decides to go on one side, he can save that one easily. It was not that much. And then Milan is pressing, and Milan has chances. Uh, this was the best time. I mean, there uh, Inter was really hanging in the ropes a little bit um, because they put in a lot of work, especially in the first and the early, early in the second half. Uh, but Milan could have scored the equalizer. There was one chance by Castillejo, which, yeah, Andanovic was standing right there, but the big one in 9 9, I think, was definitely. Uh, There was also a fist fight on the Milan bench between Bilia and Kessie, which I didn't see in the game, but I heard about it later. Where just Kessie was way has way too much steam, and they get get into the fight. So at least the team is alive. Um, there was a red card for Conti taking off. Don't ask me. I'm a Milan fan. When I saw it the first time, I thought, "Oh, it's no other red, red card." When I see it again, I say, "Okay, I can understand." Why. So the game ends with a 3-2 win for Inter. It probably should have ended 3-3. Three, three. Um, but if I look at the entirety of the game, Milan only got something going. Ah, yeah, there was a great chance by Piontek as well. Maybe a little bit too fancy, but if that's in, uh, he's the hero of the day. I would have, he would have deserved it. Although you didn't see my, my archery, but you know, just to further the myth of Piontek. Um, I think a 3-3 could have been the right result, but I think the 3-2 is also not that incorrect. Um, Inter, I would say for 60 minutes Inter was the better team. Pains me to say, but yeah. So it is two points ahead of Milan again. Uh, Roma lost, Lazio won, Lazio is back there. Um, yeah, Lazio can, can go within one point of Milan. So there's a little bit to be played. Um, I hope that Milan can take a lot from the final minutes and maybe we'll get something. Uh, this time around they don't make a last minute goal, which they did earlier in the season, now they don't. But I hope that they will close out the season uh, in a fine manner. So I was a little bit dejected and I said, okay, let's 
switch channels and I switched channels to first thing Betis uh, Barcelona. At that moment I didn't know what happened. I thought what's the magic mouse doing? And I just turn around. I see Messi plays it out, gets the ball back and shoots in the net. An absolute stunner. One of those goals that I think only Messi can score. And honestly it made me smile, it made me happy again. It was a great goal. It was one of those goals that only Messi can, can do. This chip shot in there, absolutely fabulous. Fabulous. And then I saw that he also made a free kick. He got a nice one by Suarez. Uh, Backheeled into Messi and Suarez made a goal himself. Suarez actually had a bad miss before. Three goals, Messi against Betis. I mean, I don't want to start a start, start discussion but, uh, between Messi and Ronaldo, Ronaldo because they are meanwhile so different players. But what Messi did, especially this third goal, wow! An absolute wow! Uh, and the whole stadium standing ovations, uh, bowing down before him, fully deserved, absolutely fully deserved. He is one of the greats, we can safely say, say that, without winning a World Cup or, 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 or whatever. And also PSG beating Marseille 3-1, um, great goal to make it 1-0 for Mbappé, even greater goal to make it 2-1 for Di Maria. Mbappé misses a pepe a little last minute. I like the celebration by Mbappé. Kind of, you know, I know you guys are mad at me, but we're still really good. So, yeah. Um, that's that. Uh, so, that was my Sunday. Uh, it still hurts that Milan lost, but it was a great game. It was an absolutely great game. Uh, that, I have to say, and in the I don't want to see any mesh of kit worn by any team anymore. Uh, the one thing that I makes makes it also a little bit softer is it was the uh, I was very uh, played very very closely to Inter's 111th birthday, uh, where they had some big exhibition and all that kind of going going on celebrations. So maybe for that reason, have let them have the derby big victory. For now, they're not winning anything anymore. Milan will anything finish third. So, defiant Roland. Signing off. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let, let, let me know what you thought about all of the games that you watched. Let me know what you watched. And yeah, I uh, haven't checked much more outside of those games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.